I have a deck of cards that needs to be read using redstone. Here's how we're going to do that. Howdy everyone, this is Mopot and welcome back to Redstone the World, where in today's episode we're going to be building a binary encoder. In the last episode, we built this card shuffler, so if you missed that, be sure to go back and check that out. But to summarize where the design is at, we have a whole bunch of mine cards piled on top of this hopper that each have one piece of white wool in them. I go ahead down here and draw a card, that's going to end up down in this chest down here. At the end of the game, we're going to take all of the cards, put them back into the card injector back here, and then go ahead and shuffle the cards, and you'll see that all of the mine cards are going to go into the system, get split up, and they're going to have a card, it's going to be sent down here, so that one's got one, this one has one, and so forth all the way through. First off, let's deal with the cards. So right now we've got a piece of white wool in each one of these minecart with chests, but we need to turn around here and grab one of these cards and put one of those in each chest so we'll have 52 of them stacked on top of each other. And that's better, so now let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to count this. So once the card gets drawn, we're going to need to know what card that is, and we're going to use an item sorter for that, so if you haven't seen this before, it's pretty simple. We just have the item that we want here, which in this case is going to be white wool just for testing purposes, and then a bunch of dead items so only white wool can go into this hopper. We then have a buffer item down below it and then the output just here so if i throw white wool in here you'll see that we get one white wool back out here but if we throw red wool in that's not being sorted here and that's just going to get overflown to the end so now we're going to need one for each one of these 52 cards and there we go we have all of the 52 cards in here and i've labeled which hopper is sorting which card so for instance the ace of spades is going into the first hopper here followed by the ace of clubs and so forth and then all the outputs are pooled by value so for instance all the aces are worth 11 which will all go into this first chest all the twos are worth two all the threes are worth three but then coming on down to the end here all the tens jacks queens and kings are all worth 10 so those all pull into the final chest down here and underneath each one of these numbers i've made a note of the binary representation of the decimal number because that is the value that we have to encode and if you don't understand binary, it's really quite simple, where in decimal or base 10, each digit represents an increasing power of 10 from right to left. That is, the least significant digit represents 10 to the 0, or the 1's place. The digit to the left of that represents 10 to the 1, or the 10's place. And the digit to the left of that represents 10 to the 0, or the 100's place, and so forth. In binary or base 2, the least significant bit represents 2 to the 0, or the 1's place. The next bit to the left represents 2 to the 1, or the 2's place. The next bit to the left of that represents 2 to the 2, or the 4's place, and so forth. It's pretty straightforward then, when if you have a 1 in a column, you include that place when summing to the represented value. That is, if you have the number 1010, 0, 1, 0, you have 1s in the 8 and 2 columns, so this number represents 8 plus 2, which is 10 in decimal. This is super important in redstone then, because you can only ever have two states, which is either on represented by a 1, or off represented by a 0. And in order to apply that knowledge, I have set up two sets of lines now. We have the orange lines falling out of the chest, which will carry the output of whatever card was drawn, and then that's going to be passed into the yellow line lines down here, which is going to be where the actual encoding occurs. Now these top lines need to be powered because we're going to be adding redstone torches to the side. These need to be off by default and then turn on when an item enters that chest. So in order to do that, we have to invert all the signals out of those chests and then follow that same pattern that we had down there before. Wherever there is a 1 is where we are going to place a redstone torch. So 1, 0, 1, 1 is going to be 1, not here because that's a 0, 1, 1. And then for 2, it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 0. So not here, not here, right here, not there. And then we need to follow that pattern all the way down. And just like that, there is all the torches in place here. Now if we go ahead and pick a random one, let's just choose three and dump that in there. We will see that this now turns on. So we get zero, zero, one, one. And if we take a peek down here, I put a little cheat sheet in there to follow the same pattern as before, where it's one, two, four, eight, reading from right to left. And since we have the two on down here at the end, we add the two and the one, which is three, and that is all good good. Now we did not need an extra rail over here because this was enough to encapsulate all of the numbers that we are actually encoding here, and since there are four rails, this is known as a 4-bit encoder. So now lastly, we can go ahead and test this machine out here. We're going to go ahead and grab a card. So I did have to move the shuffle button back here a little bit so that it did not interfere with the item sorter. This button eventually will be moved elsewhere because that will be triggered when the player takes a hit. So this is not going to be a problem in the future, but let's go ahead and draw a card there. Let's wait and see what happens. 10. So if we go ahead and come on down here and look at the 10s chest, we should have a 10 card in there, which is the king of clubs. That is a pretty cool there. Let's go ahead and pull that out and give it another rip here. Let's hit that button and draw a card. And this time it's going to be a two. So if we go over here and look at the two's chest, we should have a two card in there, which is the two of diamonds. And then one final pull here. Let's go ahead and hit the correct button and draw a card so that this time it's going to be a seven. And if we go ahead and look in the seven's chest, there is a seven of diamonds, which is pretty freaking 
sweet. So now we can come on over here, we can put this back into the card injector. Eventually, again, this is going to be automated, but for now, we just have to manually put those in there. And then if we come around the front here and shuffle that deck, these are all going to get sent off. And let's actually go ahead and do tick rate. 200 speed it up so that we can see this happen a whole lot faster so that it's ready to draw another card so then that's going to do it for today if you would like to see what happens with the encoded values in next episode please be sure to tune into that when it comes out but anyway hopefully you all have enjoyed go ahead and subscribe for more and i'll see y'all next time